Here we have captains of industry, telecom regulators, ministers of communication technology, operators and vendors, all drawn from the Commonwealth nations. May I begin by welcoming all of our esteemed visitors to a place we describe as fascinating Nigeria, a warm and captivating country that is home to a people of diverse cultures. Welcome to a country rich in natural and human resources and one that presents a highly rewarding investment environment. I also join my colleagues in welcoming you to this 11th edition of the Commonwealth Incomes Organization Forum. I bid you welcome to an established, independent and voluntary space at which issues that are common to all countries, irrespective of their level of economic advancement, can be dispassionately discussed and where realistic and realizable solutions can be proffered. The Forum is a constitutionally mandated flagship event of the Commonwealth Telecommunication Organization and takes place every year. This year's event offered regional and international solutions to issues bordering on broadband access, cybersecurity and new media, cloud service, among others. As member countries share knowledge on critical updates and insight into infrastructure, security and application challenges. The internet is being used as a medium of commerce, medium of communication. You see Twitter, Facebook, media for education, media for health, so on and so forth. But one thing therein that is clearly important is the need to ensure that there is trust in the user of that platform. And to gain that trust by the users, the platform must provide for three important characteristics. That is confidentiality, integrity and availability. That it, is, it must be possible to note that when you send information that nobody is able to modify that information. Nobody is able to hold that information without getting it to where it says it's being sent. It must be available at all times. We go to conferences like this, you get the gadgets that you're currently getting in here, but the next thing you go back to your company, you now want to put that onto the network. What about the network policies? What about the information that you now have access to, which is now basically not secured? What about uh, the uh, government information security that you now have access that's not on your personal device? Who's responsible when that, um, when that device is lost? Or who's responsible for your personal data on the enterprise's uh, own devices? So it's all about basically making sure that ultimately now we start thinking. As much as all these devices are all in the consumer's hands, what are we doing to protect the information that is in there? Most critical of all issues discussed here is the need for a universal broadband access, as best captured by the Secretary General of the CTO, Professor Tim Unwin, who feared that the expansion of ICT has further made the world an unequal place. However, over the next few days, we address critically important themes, and I specifically wanted to say just a few words to challenge us all now at the beginning of this event. Quite simply, as my namesake, Sir Tim, has just said, we cannot deliver on the title of this forum, Innovation Through Broadband, unless all of our peoples actually have broadband. Many of the CTO's members have less than 5% of their population connected to the internet. My own country, the UK, still has 17% of its households not connected. How can they benefit from e-government services? For those of you from the corporate sector, this is indeed a great market opportunity that I know you are grasping. However, the case I want to put before you is that more importantly than merely the economic agenda is a moral agenda. These technologies are so important, so powerful, so life-changing that we fail our brothers and sisters if we do not ensure that they too have access to broadband. There are three simple things I would like to take you to take away from what I wish to say this morning. First, as Sir Tim has said, the expansion of ICTs over the last decade has made this world a more unequal place. Put simply, these technologies are hugely powerful. Those who have access to them and know how to use them can benefit immensely. But those who do not have access, those who have an old-style mobile phone, those who cannot afford the costs of connectivity, 
are becoming increasingly disadvantaged. Kenya, reputed as one of Africa's ICT destination, shares his experience on regulation, mobile money, and internet access. Talking about the changing technology landscape, uh, before 2005, um, ICT licensing was technology oriented. In other words, when a new service is introduced in the sector, a new technology, um, uh, then you look for regulation for that particular technology. But these things became very many over time, such that it was not possible to license each and every service and each and every technology. And you can see some of the things that uh, we were licensing in Kenya before 2005. The fixed service licenses, voice services, mobile services, data service licenses, internet service licenses, and so on. But um, because of the technological de uh, development, there was convergence where uh, Techno uh, traditional technology boundaries got blurred and therefore even the way we do regulation um, has changed a lot. We are talking about uh, convergent services and we have to think about um, regulation uh, from a broader, much broader perspective. The private sector remains very crucial if the vision of a connected world must be realized and infrastructure and civics companies at the event share their innovative solutions designed towards realizing this collective goal. What we decided to do was not to treat government with the same brush. So what we did was basically verticalize that very much as we have education, health, social services, the police, we're actually working with each and every one of those different departments and making sure that we come up with solutions that talk to those departments. As much as yes, the underlying building blocks will be the same, but ultimately we talk to the business flows, we talk to the information requirements and what do they need to see because they have so many interventions that they're putting in place as government, but ultimately they don't get the response back, real-time feedback in terms of those systems. That's where they start being impeded to say, are we spending our money correctly? So we're basically working across all the different verticals of government. We kind of define uh, three different types of cloud in terms of the way that you consume them. I think everybody's familiar with the private cloud. So how do you, um, you know, you want to have something that's geographically close to your users, typically either hosted in a data center or on premise at your, um, uh, at your premises, um, and, but it's specifically dedicated to that use and that business or that particular organization. A provider cloud we generally talk about as a service provider cloud or a community cloud that might be provisioned um, for a government department um, or a like-minded body of organizations, for example, universities. And then there's the public cloud, and I think there's been a lot of talk around public cloud services, but most of the public cloud services that folks are consuming are unfortunately in a European or American context. What makes us so excited to be here and standing and talking to you folks is we've got the ability to provide each of these cloud services for you right here, right now, in an African context. On implementation of ELT and what has been the experience in Nigeria and uh, what impact would the cloud have, particularly in the raw resource environments like Nigeria, where which uh, most of the sub-Saharan African countries are within the Commonwealth countries fall into. And with that brief introduction, uh, quickly, I will look at what EHEAD is, which most of us know is electronic plus health, and then the implementation that has been done so far in Nigeria, some of the initiatives, and what are the implications for the cloud, what is actually driving cloud computing in eHealth, and then the impact of the cloud on eHealth for the future. Basically, is the use of ICT for health. So we have a convergence of telecommunications, information technology sector, as well as the health sector. It's an imaginary field that has grown over the years, in the last three decades, and is almost close to its maturity. Of course, what does EH profiles for the health system? This allows information to be processed electronically and from one a site of where the information is captured to the site where you have the physicians as well as the administrators. So we are able to obtain information, communicate with co-professionals at a distance 
as well as give first line support in terms of emergencies. Access, access, and access. That was the trust of this conference. Speakers agreed that ICT has further made the world an unequal place. And except developing countries work out strategies of rolling out broadband, the gap between developed and developing nations would continue to grow.